I have a very special topic to talk about today. That is with respect to dickable and driggable. So I have found that many people confuse it. These are the parts of shedable and I will be explaining them one by one. So shedable people generally used to see it only for the strength of planet. Though it is for the strength of planet, but you know, every factor of shed bulb works differently. And of course, a planet will not have all the strengths of shed bulb. Neither there will be a planet without any shed bulb strength. And what I have found that all of these factors of shed bulb can be separately interpreted and results can be found out through them. And this I have discussed about in my schedule webinar that is available by the name of easy predictive astrology level one that if you are interested in learning more about schedule and how it affects the result of planet you should get that webinar that is available for purchase now talking about diggable and drickable you see in sanskrit sometimes ka and ga is used interchangeably so drickable is also drickable and digable is also digable. It is one and the same thing. I will elaborate more on digable. So first, finish about digable, directional strength. Digable is directional strength and you see what is ascendant. Ascendant is the Rashi that was rising at eastern horizon at your birth time. So ascendant is east. Right at the time of sunrise, sun is always in the ascendant. Then you know there are 24 hours in a day and 12 rashis in zodiac. So one rashi more or less remains in the sky for two hours, and after two hours of sunrise, approximately, sun goes to the twelfth house. Now sun will go to the twelfth house, and because sun is only changing the rashi, oh sorry, only changing the house, the rashi will remain the same. And the second Rashi from sun will rise in the ascendant. In afternoon, sun will go into the 10th house. We say that sun have gone to the southern direction, right? So the 10th house indicates the south direction. In evening, sun will go to the 7th house. And we say that sun have gone to the west. So 7th house is west direction. And in midnight, sun will go to the 4th house. And we say that sun have gone to the north. Sun will be in the 4th house. So first house is east, fourth house is south, seventh house is west, and fourth house is north. Is the basic point. Now this dickable or directional strength is very simple. Jupiter and Mercury get strength in eastern direction, that is in the ascendant. Because they get strength in ascendant, they will lose it in the seventh house, and there will be 50% strength in fourth house and tenth house. And Accordingly, in other houses. Sun, Mars, and for that matter, Ketu also, because Ketu behaves like Mars, gets directional strength in the south, that will be in the 10th house. They will lose the directional strength in the 4th house and will have 50% directional strength in the 1st house and 7th house. Saturn gets directional strength in the western direction, that is the 7th house, and because Rahu is also like Saturn, Rahu also gets directional strength in the 7th house. They lose directional strength in the ascendant and will have 50% of directional strength in 4th house and 10th house. Moon and Venus gets directional strength in the northern direction that will be 4th house. They will lose the directional strength in the 10th house and they will have 50% of directional strength in ascendant and 7th house. In other houses, it should be decided accordingly. So you say for Jupiter, Right, because Jupiter will be in ascendant and he will be moving to the second house and third house. So Jupiter will get 100% directional strength in ascendant. Going towards the fourth house, he will be losing the directional strength in fourth house. It will be 50%. Then going to the seventh house, he will be losing his directional strength from 50% onwards. And in the seventh house, it will be 0%. After seventh house, he will be gaining his directional strength. And up to 10th house, he will gain 50% of directional strength. And from 10th house, he will go to ascendant, he will be gaining more of national strength from 50% onwards to finally reach 100% in the ascendant. In this same manner, the calculation is to be done for all the planets. Now, if you are having a Digabali planet in horoscope, what it does? 
So traditionally speaking, Digbali planet should take you in their direction and should give you gifts related to themselves, can should give you gains related to themselves. Right now, take you in your direction. What does it mean? Now, house related directions, I have already told you. Planet related direction, I should also tell you. Sun indicates the east. Moon indicates northwest. Mars indicates south. Mercury indicates north. Jupiter indicates northeast. Venus indicates southeast. Saturn indicates west. And Rahu Ketu indicates southwest. So first of all, because this planet takes you in his direction, if you find any Digbali planet, if not 100% Digbal, then the planet having maximum Digbal based on the formula I have told you before. You should find the planet who is getting highest Digbal or rather you can use Jagannath Hora for that. Right, so when you open Jagannath Hora, you somewhere land here. Right. In that, you can go to strength, you come to this screen, you go to other strength, you come to this screen. Right here, you can click, you can go to Shedbal breakup, there is Digbal, and you can compare the Digbal. In this horoscope, you see Venus is planet with maximum Digbal, 54.84. So Venus is powerful, you can use Jagannath Hora or any astrological software to do that, which gives you Shedbal breakup. Otherwise also. Or you can calculate based on the video. So first of all, the planet takes you to the direction means all the directions that I have told you right now. If you, you know, trap, if you start living in that particular direction that the planet indicates from your birthplace or to that side of country or to that side of city, it will be more beneficial for you. It will be more fortunate for you. Such remedies I prefer giving because you see, if there is any combination in horoscope, be it good or bad, it will not be effective until and unless, specifically with relation in relation to good results. If there are good combinations in your horoscope to get that activated, you also have to behave according to your horoscope, right? And these remedies of going to the favorable direction or doing the favorable things actually puts you in synchronization with the results of your horoscope because you are doing what your horoscope in India what your horoscope is indicating and this way you get good results of planets, right? So the first and the foremost important thing is do what is indicated in your horoscope. Only then you can expect yourself to be more fortunate and only then you can expect your horoscope to work for you. So generally you will see that people generally complain that, you know, my horoscope is not working for me. I have this full combination, but things are not happening. And one of the major reasons for it is you are not well synchronized with your horoscope. So do this particular thing. Not only this, if your house is facing the direction that is in resemblance with the highest Dikabal uh, getting planet, that house will be good for you. Even while working, while thinking something, eating food, and doing these major things, if you have your head or face facing that particular direction, which is indicated by the planet who is most powerful in Digbal in your horoscope, it will automatically make you more efficient, more active, good ideas will come to you and things will automatically become good for you. So in choosing in Vastu, right, in choosing the direction to live, the place to live, the facing of the house, or the direction that you should be facing while doing something important, this diggable can be used for your benefit. You should be using it for your benefit. Added to that, I also explain this thing in other way in my classes. That you see, what is this? This These are directions, right? These directions in astrology is also known by the name of ayan. Right, when sun is traveling to north direction, we say sun is going to Uttarayan. When sun is traveling to south direction, we say sun is going to Dakshinayan. Sun is going to south direction when he is between the Rashis of Cancer to Sagittarius. And sun is going to north direction when he is in Rashi between Capricorn to Gemini. Makar Sankranti have happened recently. That means Makar Sankranti means Sun have entered the Rashi Makar, that is Capricorn. And by his entry into Rashi Makar, he have started his northward course, that is Uttarayan motion. So with Makar Sankranti starts the Uttarayan, right? The northern direction course of Sun. 
Now this ayan, which means direction from this ayan, one thing should come to your mind, Narayan, Vishnu. Now Narayan, the purpose of Narayan, what Narayan does in this world, you know Vishnu is a deity and he takes incarnations for us. But what is the purpose of incarnation? Right, Vishnu, Sri Vishnu himself have told the purpose of the incarnation. He said, Yada yada hi dharmasya glani rabhakti bhartha abhyutthanam dharmasya tadatmanam sajam yam pratranaya shadhunam vinashaya sadushkritam dharma sanstavanat aya sambhavami yuve. So, yada yada hi dharmasya, whenever dharma glani rabhakti bhartha, whenever dharma will decrease, whenever dharma will be humiliated, yada yada hi dharmasya glani rabhakti Taduttanam adharmasya. Then at that time to rescue the dharma. Right, I will come. Paritranaya sadhu nam vinashaya To help good people and to destroy bad people and to establish new dharma, I will come. So Sri Vishnu by his incarnations and what he do in that incarnation establishes dharma that people should follow. Now you see in this Kali Yuga, astrologically speaking, how Kali Yuga starts? Kali Yuga starts by the death of Sri Krishna. So the incarnation before Kali Yuga is Sri Krishna and the Dharma for Kali Yuga because Vishnu shows you the Dharma. The Dharma for Kali Yuga is what Sri Krishna have done. For this particular reason, we advise that Bhagavad Gita should be followed by everyone. Bhagavad Gita should be read by everyone because Bhagavad Gita is the teaching of Sri Krishna and Sri Krishna is to be followed in Kali Yuga. Not only Bhagavad Gita, Harivansa Puran, Bhagavat, these you can also read that also have stories related to Krishna and his ideologies and that you should try to follow in Kali Yuga because it is the Dharma for Kali Yuga. And when you follow the Dharma, what happens? Paritranaya Shadhu Nam, Vishnu comes to help you. Right. So this is something related to spirituality I have told you coming back to the topic. Ayan means direction. Narayan decides the Dharma. Right, the Dharma for Kali Yuga, Narayan have decided in the form of Krishna and whatever he have done in the incarnation of Krishna. But your personal Dharma that you should follow in life to be successful, your personal karma that you should follow in life to be supported by Sri Vishnu, you get supported by Sri Vishnu, what will happen? You will be fortunate, you will be lucky, you will prosper in life and all of these good results will happen. So to get supported by Sri Vishnu, to be more fortunate, happy, contented, satisfied, you should follow the planet who is getting maximum digable in your horoscope. Right. Now, as per the nature, behavior, character of the planet, you can do things. Most importantly, I believe because the traditional principle also tells you that this planet gives you benefits. This planet gives you gains. And benefit and gain is also one of the most important result that you get by the blessings of Sri Vishnu, right? He is Anugraha Murti. You see the compassion of God and how he can do everything for his devotees. So first and foremost, you should try to follow the profession of this planet who is getting highest digbal in your horoscope. Right. If you cannot be in their profession, for example, if Mercury is getting the highest digbal, you should try working in banking or finance. What profession is indicated by which planet I have already discussed in my 10th house video. You may have a look at that. So if Mercury is having the highest digbal, you can do, you can work in, you know, banking finances, right? Dealing with money, teaching and all of these things. You can work in this particular area. And if you cannot work in this particular area, then in that particular scenario, if you are already working or if you have some other qualifications, then try to be like Mercury. Right? Mercury love taking notes, Mercury love spending time with children's, Mercury love helping others, Mercury love educating others and these qualities you can have in your nature, behavior, character, right? Good records keeping and, you know, like tabulary, uh, tabularly arranging things with help of pie charts and properly stacking things. This you can do in any profession that you are doing and it will make sure that you are following the path, you are following the approach of Mercury that will make you more fortunate, more in synchronization with your horoscope and you will be in a better condition to get better results as per your horoscope, right? This is what you need to do. The Sikandath aura certainly will not calculate the digbal for Rahu and Ketu. For this particular reason only, I have told you the manual calculation of digbal just when we started with the video, right? So you have to take that into account.
right? Manual calculation is always the best. That's why I always teach it. Now, keeping this same particular thing in mind, what approach you should take when different planets are Digbali and what blessings we can expect, I should tell you in short. So when sun is there, you should, like, as I told you, professional significations, I have always already discussed in my 10th house video, so you can watch that. But yes, when sun is Digbali, one thing is there with sun. You see, sun is a king and king is generous. And king is impartial. King do not do partiality with anyone. Even if a very highly placed person will do some crime, king will punish him. Even if a lowly person will do some good thing, the king will reward him. So for if the sun is the Digbali planet, first of all, you, the most powerful planet in Digbal, first of all, you should be very impartial. Secondarily, you should be very generous. Impartial and generosity are the two things. Impartiality and generosity are the two things that you should follow. Other than that, when sun is powerful, gifts related to sun will be, you will get name, fame, prestige, power, power authority in your life. You will be the leader in your clan group, in your society. You will be very successful. People will look up to you. Moon, moon is a queen. So moon is also generous. But along with that, Moon is also very soft-hearted, very caring, very nurturing. So these things you should have in your habit. And what Moon blesses you with? Moon blesses you with good fortune. Moon blesses you with good finances. Moon blesses you with the support of family members and friends. Moon blesses with your comfort. Moon blesses you with comforts, fame, luxuries, enjoyments, and convenience conveniences in life. Mars. Mars is commander-in-chief. Mars blesses you with high position. Mars blesses you with authority. Mars blesses you with power. Mars blesses you with support of people. And Mars blesses you with stamina, vigor, vitality. Mars blesses you with good health. Mars blesses you with longevity. Because he is Dhartiputra. But what you should do to get that blessing? You see, Mars is commander-in-chief. right? So you should be leader. You should be guiding people regarding how to do their work, their things efficiently. Other than that, Commander-in-Chief always follows the order of the King and Queen. So the order of your elders, you should always follow. And along with that, Mars is also great disciplinarian. You see, Commander-in-Chief can never, you know, you can never expect Commander-in-Chief to, you know, be late or things like that. So good discipline you should follow. Physical exercise, etc. you should do and try to maintain good relationship with your siblings. Be your own siblings or cousins or anyone. Have good relationship with them. You will get the blessings of Mars. Mercury. Mercury, as I told you, Mercury is good in speaking. So, you know, first of all, converse well. Right? Help students and those who are younger than you. And because Mercury is prince, what does the prince do? Prince is also like king, right? So be also be Im impartial, right? Don't do partiality with people. And most importantly, Mercury indicates friend. Help your friends. Stand with your friends. Be a very good friend. Basically what I want to say. This way your Mercury will improve. The bad traits of Mercury are also there. So don't waste your time. Don't take things for granted. And rather than expecting things from people, make sure that you do more to people than what you expect. And if you do that, what Mercury will bless you with? Mercury will give you good communication skills. Mercury will give you good friends. Mercury will give you great support. Right? Mercury will make you intelligent. Mercury will make you respected. Mercury will give you luxuries and comforts in life. That Mercury indicates. If Jupiter is the most powerful planet, then you should be like Jupiter. Being like Jupiter means you should always follow Dharma. You should be religious. Educate people about your religion and religious practices. With your knowledge and advice, whenever possible, try to help people. And do some intellectual thing, writing book or educating people that should be done. Religious practice should be very strongly followed. What Jupiter will bless you with? Good fortune, good luck, good children, good followers, good supporters. Long, 
long long life disease free life fortune stability and constant growth in life constant positive growth in life is what jupiter will bless you with in the case of venus you should respect women you should whenever possible you should you know like organize things for people organize things for society right help people around yourself do things in a better way help and respect people of opposite gender and most importantly practice ethics and morals in relationships and sexuality then venus will bless you and venus blesses you with good fortune beauty status support from kinsmen and specifically when venus blesses you your personal life your children your wife is very happy you have all the conveniences and luxuries in your life if saturn is the most powerful planet as per digbal then first of all you should be dis disciplinarian you should do all your things yourself don't put your responsibility or your work on others and along with that you should be merciful towards people from lower status of society if you do this then what saturn will do for you he will give you good servant he will make you leader in your profession in your society he will also make you very famous and he will make you do some very great karma in life which will benefit many generations to come right saturn will make people follow you if your saturn is beneficial these are the good results of saturn right so this section that i am elaborating right now it can also be taken as what needs to be done to make these planets good and if these planets are good what results can be expected right this section can be used in this way as well if rahu is near the seventh house then in that particular scenario what you should do you should be clever you should be smart and along with that you know things related to practical life how to behave how to deal with things and all of these things you should also try to educate people around yourself never deceive anyone never show over smartness right and don't do bad to people don't mock people don't laugh at people under any condition and most importantly never you know you may have something extra maybe better skill of talking or you know of hiding things but never misuse it to deceive anyone or do bad to anyone then rahu will be good and as rahu becomes good you have international name fame status you have good luxuries and conveniences in life and specifically you earn through unconventional sources which no one have thought of great name fame status is also given by rahu and most importantly rahu makes you very protected and secured in life that no one can even touch you or come closer to you forget about competing with you ketu if ketu is in the 10th house or near 10th house you say 11th house 9th house 8th house 12th house then ketu will be having more than 50% of tigbal in that particular scenario first of all you should be very calculative you should be spiritual try to help people by your advice be detached from things most importantly maintain cleanliness and maintain good personal hygiene this way you will make your ketu good and as your ketu is good you have good followers you have good supporters everything happens easily in your life your life is free of obstructions and obstacles and whatever you want to do you succeed in it in the first go along with that your coming generations are also very fortunate and you are able to leave many resources for people after you so that they always thank you right so follow the planet who is having maximum digbal in horoscope in the ways that i have just told you and this particular way you will be able to be very successful in life because this planet digbali planet gives you success gives you rewards and gains related to himself now as i have told you this you must have also understood that this digbali planet is very good for profession so it is very good for profession means to say if you are having a digbali planet in horoscope and when in transit any positive planet comes over that digbali planet professional promotions etc can be expected in the dasha antar dasha of digbali planet professional professional progress gain of name fame status wealth good fortune 
can also be expected. Right? So these things you have to keep in mind. Now, one more thing is there. I wanted to say it since many videos. I have told it multiple times also. Right? But every 10, 20 video, there are 100, 200 new people coming to the channel and then they don't watch previous videos. So I have to say it again. My videos or what I am doing, it is not like, you know, it is not like you are reading forecasts from a newspaper and, you know, you are saying that it is, uh, you know, like not working or working or whatever. My purpose is teaching you astrology, right? So in every video, I am teaching you a little bit of astrology. You have to watch all of it and you have to do a proper analysis, right? For example, you say you are having a Digbali Jupiter in Ascendant, suppose. But this Jupiter is debilitated, first of all. Secondarily, it is afflicted by the aspect of malefic, say Mars. In this particular scenario, though Digable is there, so there should be professional success, I just told you. But this Jupiter is debilitated also and he is affected by malefic Mars as well. Now, how much in the dasha of this Jupiter you can expect professional success? Now, because this Jupiter is debilitated and debilitated planet cannot give 100% of his result, debilitated planet can give 20% of his result only. So little bit of professional advancement can be expected, but great professional advancement cannot be expected at all. Additionally, it is expected by Mars also and by as by as this, this is the next topic of, right? This is the next topic of Drikubal. It is expected by Mars and any beneficial planet expected by a malefic planet, the beneficence of the planet is lost. So the good result of Jupiter in the ascendant that should be giving name, fame, status, good health, long life, this will be decreased. And this particular result of directional strength that I have just told you that there will be professional advancements in the dasha antar dasha of this Jupiter that will also be reduced. So professional advancements will be reduced and because there's a malefic aspect, it will be delayed also and it should very little professional advancement should come by the end of the Jupiter Dasha if the Dasha is running. So in the same manner, my purpose is not to give you predictions, right? I am not making transit videos or these type of videos which are dealing more with predictions. I am trying to teach you astrology, right? If you are in synchronization with my tribe, want to learn it, this channel will help you. Otherwise, it is not serving any other purpose, right? I should be very clear about it. So you have to analyze related to all the factors. That is the basic point. Right, you have to keep that in mind. Right, if Jupiter is not debilitated, not expected by any malefic, but still it is in the ascendant, then in that particular scenario, the maximum result of Digbal will come because here Digbal is the most <coughs> Digbal is the most important factor, or Digbal have taken Jupiter one step up. Right, that is the basic point. Now coming to Drikbal or Drikbal. Drik or Drik is Drishti aspect. Now you know about aspect of planets, right? Every planet aspect 7th house, full aspect is there. Along with that, Jupiter also aspects 5th house and 9th house. Other planets also aspect 5th house and 9th house, but Jupiter have full aspect on 5th house and 9th house. Other planets have 50% aspect on 5th house and 9th house. Saturn also aspects 3rd house and 10th house with full aspect along with 7th house. Other planets have 25% aspect on 3rd house and 10th house. Mars puts 100% aspect on 4th house and 8th house except for the 7th house. Other planets have 75% aspect on 4th house and 8th house. On 2nd house, 11th house, 6th house and 2nd house. 2nd, 12th, 6th and 11th house, generally no planet is having an aspect. But I consider that Rahu also aspects 12th house, 5th house and 9th house with 100% aspect, except for Rahu. No planet is able to influence the 12th house. Ketu have no aspect at all. 7th aspect of Rahu I don't take. And no matter Rahu is retrograde or direct, 12th house is 12th house. It should always be seen as 12th house. So for 9th house, 12th house will be 8th house. Rahu is retrograde in the 9th house, does not matter. Right, 12th house remains 12th house. Rahu remains a direct or retrograde. That is another point. It does not change the calculation. Right, 12th house is 12th house. Always should be counted direct. That is the basic point. 
Now regarding this drinkable, you know there is a percentage of strength, 100% strength, 75% strength, 50% strength, 25% strength. So basic point is drink, drinkable or drinkable is the strength that a planet gets by the influence of good planet, 100%, 25%, 75% or 50%. Positive strength if they are getting strength of beneficial planet. Negative or, you know, bad influence if they are getting influenced by a malefic planet that is the basic one right there are mathematical there are mathematical formulas involved in the precise calculation of the you know level of or the intensity of aspect that is falling on it so that i am not dealing with i am not making it very technical i will keep it quite simple for you so two three things can happen here a planet can be influenced by more than one planet. In that scenario, if all the planets are benefic or all the planets are malefic, we are taking natural benefic malefic into consideration. House lordship we are not taking into consideration. If the planet is expected by all benefic or all malefic planet in that particular scenario, the case is simple. But if the planet is getting aspected by one malefic also, one benefic also, then in that scenario, two things are there. First of all, you have to see percentage of strength. 75% bad strength of Saturn and 100% good aspect of Jupiter because good aspect of Jupiter is more good aspect should be the result. In the case when malefics and benefics both are influencing with 100% aspect, you have to judge the strength of planet. Saturn is also putting 100% aspect, Jupiter is also putting 100% aspect, you see which planet is powerful, the result of that planet will happen. And this powerful should be checked as per the Rashi. So this way you should check and you should decide the result over planet and you should decide result over house also. Because in the houses where there are no planets, result happen as per aspects only. Now regarding houses and regarding planets, all the planets who are influencing their results will happen, but the intensity will be different. For example, you say 7th house is empty altogether. Okay. So there is no planet in the 7th house. Now to decide the result of the 7th house, you have to see all the planets who are influencing the 7th house, including 25%, 50%, 75%, and 100% aspect. You should say result for all the aspects. But whether the result will be good or bad, that should be decided by the most powerful planet or the most strongest aspect. First by most strongest aspect and then by most powerful aspect. Right. So the result will be ultimately good or bad. That should be decided this way. That should be decided this way. And whenever the Shantar, the Shah of the planet is coming, any planet is coming, you see, for example, you say Saturn is situated in 12th house. So this Saturn is putting his 75% aspect on 7th house also. Now you see if this Saturn is good for the 7th house, if this Saturn is 7th Lord or the 7th or the Saturn is beneficial or friendly to the 7th house Lord in that particular scenario, because Saturn from the 12th house is putting 75% aspect on the 7th house and that Saturn is good for the 7th house in the Dasha Antar Dasha of Saturn. 75% good result related to marriage should happen. So this is applicable in the case of Dasha Antar Dasha also. If there is a planet in 7th house, then the result happens to that planet as well. I think the way I have explained it, you have clearly understood it and there is no scope of confusion into it at all. Sorry. Some years ago in astrology, when I started doing astrology, you know, around 2009, 2008, there was high debate on this particular topic regarding how to predict empty houses. People were making formulas all over it. Do this, do that. I never understood why this question came in the first place. If it looks that a house is empty, <clears throat> you predict by aspect. If aspects are not there, you are actually willing that 100% aspect is not there. Partial aspect will be there. 75% aspect and 50% aspect, 25% aspect will be there. There is no house which have no direct, no complete or partial aspect at all. Every house will have at least one influence there. 
right so the consideration of partial aspect is very very important and with respect to houses with respect to houses we know that in the dasha antar dasha of planet result related to houses owned by the planet result related to the house conjoined by house where the planet is placed in result related to these houses happen also result related to the house whose lord is conjoined with this particular planet aspect having any type of relationship with this planet the result related to that house happens depending on the result being benefic or malefic result uh, depending on the connection being good or bad the result is good or bad accordingly in this particular setup you should also add the ho the houses and the planets who are getting partial aspects they are also getting activated sorry related to the connection between planets basically connections are not positive or negative the nature of the planet is positive or negative for example if sun is connected to venus then sun and venus are inimical towards each other on enmity between planets enmity and friendship between planets i have already made two three videos you can watch that so venus and saturn uh, sorry venus and sun are connected with each other they are inimical towards each other so it should be considered as a bad combination and bad result should happen now they are inimical towards each other only because of their natural signification so in the matter of natural significations only this bad results will uh, this bad results will come to pass so it will be bad for name fame status authority for the sun side and for uh, marriage and sexuality enjoyment for the venus side right regarding house lordships you say this venus is the lord of the fifth house and the sun is lord of the seventh house then because it is a connection between uh, say this venus is the this sun is the lord of the fifth house and venus is lord of the ninth house in that particular scenario talking of house lordship when you judge to it you will see that a connection between 7th house and 9th house indicate that fortune should come through spouse fortune should come through marriage or fortune should come through other significations of 7th house traveling fights etc and that result should also be predicted so the nature of planet being friendly or inimical towards each other and that impacting the result of the planet is only the natural signification based result of the planet whereas house lordship result based house lordship result of the planet should be decided based on the house based on the two houses who are connecting with each other being benefic or malefic in this particular case now you see this sun venus are connected with each other so naturally venus indicating relationship connected with his enemy it is bad for relationship but if the sun is the fifth house lord and venus is the seventh house ninth house lord it indicates fortune through marriage etc you should say that in this particular time person is unfortunate with respect to marriage and relationship so there will be difficulties in getting into relationship difficulties in getting married marital life if the person is already married there can be difficulties in marital life but at the same point of time one will gain luck through wife one will gain luck through spouse right and they will be lucky so problems will be there dissatisfaction will be there fights will be there but luck will be there at the same point of time right so you should know how to predict assimilate and make a way between contradictory results because if you don't do that your practice of astrology will remain incomplete right that is the first and foremost important thing right so this is between planets now with respect to houses we see one particular thing we see the relationship of if a planet is powerful you say exalted planet own rashi planet mool trikon planet varguttam planet this planet is beneficial this planet is good now this planet is good any house this planet will expect good result related to that planet will come in dashantar dasha of the planet or you say good result of that house will come due to this planet one point if the planet is not into any of these special conditions planet is just in friendly rashi or inimical rashi normal condition in that particular scenario a planet will give good result related to house or bad result related to house that should be seen with respect to whether the planet is friendly to the lord of the house or not in the same manner as we told for exaltation the result of a debilitated planet is generally bad so that should be taken as bad result of a combust planet planet in planetary war these planets are just ineffective to give their result that does not mean that they will not give any result they should be considered as normal planets and their friendship with the lord of the house they are influencing by aspect or by placement should be 
judged and predictions should be made accordingly so this is not a difficult task and i think the interpretation of result is specifically related to how to predict the shantar dasha and see few words are very common when i say this result will happen in dasha antar dasha the principle of dasha antar dasha is the result indicated by planet happen in dasha antar dasha so even if the dasha antar dasha is not happening it is the result of planet that the planet is giving so you can take this word dasha antar dasha out you can take it as this is the result that the planet is giving this will serve the purpose right so analysis of influence of one planet over each other whether it is by aspect or by conjunction should be seen with respect to this way i will repeat it once again talking about natural significations of planet you should see friendship enmity of planets for example you say sun saturn combination now sun sorry sun saturn are inimical towards each other so for the significations of saturn help and support from servants employees for hard work this connection will be bad the person will not be able to do hard work because of some reason or the other or the person can be lazy he will not be supported by his servants or people working under him they can cheat him go against him uh, deceive him and any of these things x y z for the significations related to sun that means name fame power authority status government because it is connected by saturn there can be losses through government punished through government punished through father loss of father name fame and prestige can be lost additional point if saturn is multrikon vargottam so rashi exalted then saturn become positive and in this particular scenario the bad influence of saturn over uh, sun will be converted into a good influence and this same combination will be able to give name fame status recognition power to the native if saturn is in own rashi specifically in uh, you say aquarius and sun is aspecting it sun will aspect from 7th house only sun is also aspecting from leo in that particular scenario sun is also positive and because of this particular reason one will be able to gain name fame status signification of sun due to saturn due to servants hard work etc so this way the result is to be predicted now in the same combination you should take house lordship of the planet also for example if this is leo ascendant then sun will be the lord of the ascendant and saturn will be the lord of 7th house and 8th house now talking of this now in when it comes to houses you have to mix the signification natural nature of planet you should not see so seventh lord connected to ascendant there will be traveling signification of seventh house and lagna itself seventh house is traveling so native will go on traveling lagna itself seventh house is competition and fight so person can be in competition and fight lagna itself seventh house is spouse so person will be able to choose a spouse for himself or you say person will fall in love person can get married eighth house indicates misfortune lagna itself so person will be unfortunate eighth house indicates instability lagna itself so person will be instable in the shantar dasha this result also should be predicted what i have done i have taken the house lordship of planet and mixed the result and predicted it right this is to be done now coming to other point regarding result of planet over a house you say a planet is influencing the seventh house that planet is a beneficial planet it will give good result related to seventh house what good result related to seventh house see the natural signification of planet if it is jupiter then gain of fortune gain of luck gain of status gain of prosperity gain of conveniences gain of gain of comforts through marriage will happen right because jupiter a beneficial planet is influencing the seventh house take the significations of jupiter jupiter is beneficial only because the significations of jupiter are good that is the basic point this result will not be there if jupiter is debilitated because in that particular scenario jupiter will be negative in that case it will give misfortune struggles lack of conveniences mental tension and all of these particular things i will add more point to it later let me explain other things also if you have to check the house lordship of jupiter say jupiter is aspecting the seventh house and it is the third house lord and sixth house lord so being third house lord it will third house indicate struggle it will indicate struggle in going into relationship third house indicate tension it will indicate tension because of relationship or spouse right third house indicate sibling so there will be siblings creating tension in marriage or sibling supporting you siblings supporting your spouse depending on whether uh, this jupiter is beneficially placed or badly placed right sixth lord 
6,000 degrees disease competitions fights bad things. And it is connected to seventh house. So there will be disease to spouse, competition to spouse, fights uh, from spouse, fights in marriage and all of these things, right? So regarding house, based on the signification of the house, you are going to predict based on the planet. Also, you are going to predict based on the significations, but a planet is beneficial only because he's having beneficial significations. So we generally say that a beneficial planet will give good result. What good result that have to be decided based on the signification of the planet. That's the basic one. Right. This way you will have to predict it. In this particular scenario regarding house lordship also, if Jupiter is lord of the sixth house and it is influencing the seventh house while being into a good condition, Multrikon, Vargottam, etc. In that particular scenario, because the planet have turned positive, it should not indicate fights, litigations with spouse, but instead it should indicate winning in fight litigation competition because of spouse. So you have to convert this result into good, right? That is the basic point of analysis. Now talking of this Drigbal or Drigbal that I was talking about, analysis of aspect I have told you, thing related to this Drigbal and Drigbal is, if a planet, beneficial planet, is influenced by a malefic planet, then what happens? The good result of this beneficial planet goes for a toss. The good result of this beneficial planet is compromised. Right? So you say Jupiter is 10th Lord in 11th house. So first of all, Jupiter is in 11th house. It will give you fortune, name, fame, status. Right? 11th house indicates gain. So gain of things related to Jupiter. So Jupiter indicates blessing, gain of blessing. Jupiter indicates children, gain of children. Jupiter indicate fortune, gain of fortune, Jupiter indicate conveniences, gain of conveniences, etc. will happen. Now, if it is expected by malefic, what will happen? The planet will be bad result giving. So instead of gain of these things, there will be loss of these things. Now, of course, if Jupiter is expected by a malefic planet, it have turned the result into malefic, but that does not disappear the Jupiter from 11th house, right? So there will be gain from fortune. That is the result of the 11th house being expected by a malefic planet. Sometimes losses will also be there. Right. So the result of malefic aspect is that it is not always gain of conveniences. Sometimes it can be loss also. What will be that sometime when losses will happen that should be decided based on good dasha, antar dasha or bad dasha, antar dasha, whatever is operative at that point of time when you are analyzing it. That is the first and foremost point. Now, regarding aspect of this particular point, you say uh, Jupiter is situated in 11th house. It is expected by Mars. Mars from the 8th house. Now, the good result of this Jupiter have decreased. Now, this Jupiter is also expecting the 3rd house. Generally, Jupiter expecting the 3rd house should indicate right, good result of hard work, person being courageous and all of that. But because of the aspect of Mars, the good result of Jupiter is compromised. Now, good results through hard work and great courage, vigor, vitality, this result will not be that great, but it will be compromised. That is the basic point. It works in reverse also. A negative planet when expected by a benefic planet behaves well. Right. So for the house he's situated in, he gives good result related to that house. For the houses he's expecting, he gives good result related to that particular house that it is expecting. So it works in both ways. Right. So the basic point is a planet influenced by a beneficial planet becomes benefic. If it is a malefic, it becomes benefic. If it is already a benefic, it becomes even more beneficial. A planet influenced by malefic gives bad result giving. If it is a good planet, the good result of the planet is compromised. If it is a bad planet, it becomes even bad. So this is the particular reason I always teach in my classes that if you have to see very bad results, you will see that if a malefic is afflicted by another malefic, the planet becomes very bad result giving. For example, you say you have a planet in 12th house. Now everyone do some, everyone will do some expenditure in life. No one can live without expenditure. So everyone will have expenditure. You have planet in 12th house. You have planets expect, expecting 12th house. Your expenditures will be more. That means that you don't have many things from your family side. You have to do it yourself. So you will have to do more expenditure. 
but will this more expenditure indicate that you will become very poor or you will have penury in life generally it will not indicate until and unless there is a malefic influencing the 12th house malefic in 12th house is influenced by another malefic or malefic aspecting 12th house is influenced by another malefic now this is an afflicted malefic in the 12th house or aspecting the 12th house because this malefic is afflicted it will take the result to extreme so the extreme result of expenditure, complete penury, complete loss of money can also happen. In the same manner in the river stone, if a beneficial planet is influenced by another beneficial planet, the result can be extremely good also. For example, life partner is good, supportive. So more or less every, I will, I cannot say that every life partner is supportive and all of that. But if you have a beneficial planet influencing the seventh house, your life partner is very supportive, right? Generally, all life partners are not supportive. Your life partner is supportive. If this beneficial planet is powerful, your life partner is even more supportive. And if this beneficial planet is himself influenced by another beneficial planet, then your life partner is super supportive. So much supportive that other people will be greedy of her. That why I don't have this type of life partner. Right. So good result can also be increased. Bad result can also be decreased. This is planet to planet. Now talking about planet to house, as I told you in my example, if Jupiter is influencing the third house, good result of hard work, gain of courage, vigor, vitality will happen. But if this Jupiter is expected by malefic, then gain of things through hard work, gain of vigor, vitality may not be that great. Right. It will be compromised. But it is not like that result will completely disappear at the end of the day. It is Jupiter aspecting the house, not the malefic who is influencing Jupiter. So the result is compromised, but not completely unavailable at all. In this particular scenario, we have to keep one thing in mind that if a house is aspected by the Lord of the house, no matter Lord of the house is beneficial or malefic or Lord of the house is further afflicted or sorry, not, not including the Lord of the house is malefic or benefic. Lord of a house influencing his house will always save the house and bad results will not happen. But the speciality with this Drigbal is suppose Saturn is expecting his own house. So Saturn will be able to save his out, save his house hundred percent. This Saturn is weak, does not matter. He will save his house for sure. Right. So even weak planet, when he is influencing his own house by situated in the house or respecting the house is able to save the house. But speciality of this Drikbal is that if this Saturn is expected by Mars, this Saturn is afflicted and the result giving capacity of Saturn have diminished. So even debilitated Saturn influencing his own house can save the house, but Saturn afflicted by another malefic will not be able to 100% save his house. I am not saying that he will not be able to save his house at all, but 100% saving his house, which he will otherwise do, cannot happen. Only 50% saving of the house is possible. Say if this house is 7th house, then 50% saving means either the person is married. If he is married, then he is not successful in fights, litigations, etc. And if the person is successful in fight, litigations, etc., then he is not married. So only 50% result is happening. 100% result is not happening. This way, the analysis of a horoscope should be done that I told you in nutshell while also describing you the difference between Drigbal and Digbal, how they work, how they should be used and how a horoscope should be read. And as I told you, my simple purpose of my teachings and my simple purpose of any of the social services that I'm doing, writing articles, making YouTube videos or anything is to teach you astrology so that you can see your horoscope better. And I am not providing ready predictions that you should apply, right? For that, I do consultations. And if you want me to predict on your horoscope formally, you can make me do it. Otherwise, I am not either by writing articles or by making videos. My purpose is to educate and not to give predictions. I hope this video helped cleared, helped clearing few of your doubts and will make your analysis better. Thank you for watching.